In this video, I'm going to let you in on one of the secrets that I've learned and put to use in numerous solar panel systems. This is a hack that will save you some money and give you more knowledge about how your system works. But before I get into that, please understand this video will be for a do-it-yourselfer with at least a basic understanding of wiring and electricity. This is definitely not a project for a first-timer. Anytime that you work with electricity, you could hurt yourself or start a fire. Also, the hack that I will show you in this video is very functional and will get the job done. I've used this for years in quite a few off-grid setups with great success. But since this is a DIY project, it may not look as pretty or be as clean and neat as something you buy ready-made. Having said all that, the secret today is how to build your own solar combiner box. A combiner box is a device that takes multiple inputs and combines it into one. These are used in both grid-tied and off-grid solar applications where you have multiple solar panels or multiple strings of solar panels and you need to combine those into one wire that connects to a charge controller or inverter, which usually only have one input connection point. There are other ways to combine multiple wires into one, such as MC4Y adapters, but adapters don't provide any safety protection for your system. They also don't allow you to turn on or off individual solar panels or strings for maintenance or repairs, nor do they give you the ability to troubleshoot problems. While those occurrences are rare, a combiner box is a cheap layer of safety and flexibility that I don't recommend you skip. Now there are plenty of combiner boxes available to buy that are already assembled and ready to be installed. So why would you want to build your own? For one thing, there's the fun of building something with your own hands and getting to see how it works. And let's be honest, you aren't watching my videos if you have no interest in tinkering or DIY projects anyway. But you're also going to save at least 50% of the cost by doing it yourself, and usually more like 70%. And finally, you'll also have ready access to parts at your local hardware store. We'll get into that more a bit later in the video. To build your own combiner box, you only need three things. A load center, some breakers or fuses, and some wire. A load center, which is more commonly called a breaker box, operates in reverse to how a combiner box works. It takes a single input of power and then divides it into multiple outputs or circuits in your home. So all we're going to do is hack a load center to operate backwards and function as a combiner box. But you can't just go out and buy any load center to make this work. You have to find one that is rated for direct current. The secret here is that the QO series of load centers from Square D or Schneider Electric is rated for up to 48 volt DC. You'd never know that by looking at the product page or the box that it comes in. But if you dig deep enough into the technical specifications and FAQs, you will find that they are in fact rated for and fully compatible with DC. QO load centers are available in the United States at your local Home Depot or Lowe's hardware store. You'll also find a range of breakers and accessories for them in stock. This is important because you can go and touch and feel and see what you are working with before you buy something, which you aren't going to be able to do with a ready-made combiner box available on an e-commerce website. Getting your hands on a physical box gives you the ability to see how you will need to mount it, make sure your wires won't be too big, take measurements, and plan the routing of your wiring. When shopping for a load center, make sure that you don't confuse the QO series with the Homeline series. They're both Square D brands and will be right next to each other on the shelves. The Homeline series is not rated for DC applications. Also, you'll find indoor and outdoor rated versions, and the outdoor ones are much more expensive. So if you're not going to mount it where it's going to ever get hit by rain, skip it and go with the indoor version. Last but not least, grab some breakers that are a match to the maximum operating current of your solar panels or strings. So now that you have a load center and some breakers, how does this work? First, I'm gonna demonstrate the basic concepts with this small load center, and then I'll show you a bigger one that is already wired up and in use on one of my production solar systems. Inside the cover, you will see three or four large connection points, a bus bar, and some plastic slots for the breakers. The vast majority of the time, these boxes are going to be wired up with AC, which has at least three wires that need to be connected. DC only has two, a positive and a negative. So we are going to make a modification to the box by connecting all of the contact points that touch the breakers into one positive circuit. The negative side is already good to go. 
So all you need to do is connect the two positive terminals together using a wire. Make sure the wire is not too small to carry the current that you will be using. The wire will be very short so it won't really need to be super thick, but you also don't want to use something really small that will create a lot of resistance or get too hot. Next, we need to connect the input wires. These are the wires coming in from your solar panels. They connect to the bottom of the breaker, and the breaker snaps into the load center. Then we need to connect the single wire that will carry the combined power from the combiner box to your inverter or charge controller. This wire can be connected to either of the two positive connection points since they are now connected by the jumper wire. And finally, we need to connect the negative wires from the solar panels to the negative bus bar and a single wire from the larger negative connection point that will go to the inverter or charge controller. Unfortunately, I must not have hit record on my camera, but the negative side is super straightforward and I think you get the idea by now. Now let me show you what one looks like that is already completely wired up and installed. This one combines four inputs for my 12 volt system in my shed. One thing that you'll see here that I haven't already mentioned are the entry and exit points into the box. There are quite a few options that you can use such as cable glands, cable clamp connectors, service entrance connectors, or other accessories to protect your wires from sharp edges and or connect to conduit. Now let's get down to the dollars and cents, which is the big reason to build your own combiner box. Here's a really nice combiner box from Midnight Solar with eight inputs. It costs about 400 US dollars and comes with everything you need to install it and go. Now here are the components for an eight input QO combiner box with some local tax added in. 120 US dollars is about 30% of the cost of the Midnight Solar combiner box and uses breakers instead of fuses. Now that's what you call a no-brainer in my book. But how does the DIY combiner box perform? Will it be as good as the purpose-built unit from a solar manufacturer? Unfortunately, I couldn't think of any way that I could do an objective, measurable test. Plus, I don't own a commercially made combiner box to use as a comparison. So all I can offer you is anecdotal evidence based on my own personal experience. I have been using these for over six years with no problems at all. But I'm not the first person to come up with this idea, so you don't have to just take my word for it. If you do a Google search for DIY combiner box, you will quickly see that this idea has been around for a long time, and there are other how-tos out there. I've checked out some of these other projects, and some of them look like they could even be built for smaller solar systems using automotive fuses and small plastic electrical boxes for only $30 or $40 total. Some of my longtime subscribers may also remember that I did a video on DIY combiner boxes back in 2015. I just wanted to do an updated version for 2020 with some more up-to-date information and tricks that I've learned. But the point is, there are a lot of people that have had a lot of success with these, so hopefully that gives you some confidence that these work well. Thanks for watching my video. If you found this interesting or useful, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.